Hi, I'm Galita Dashti, and my article describes the performance of Middle Eastern and North African, or MENA, Jewish music in the U.S. public sphere between 2000 and 2020. This was an exciting short article for me to write as a scholar because I've been an active performer in this scene throughout this entire period. Performing MENA Jewish music in the U.S. in 2000 meant catering to Jewish and non-Jewish audiences who often knew little about such musical traditions or of the existence of the Jews who made this music. For some of the established musicians who performed Sephardi Mizrahi repertoire during the 90s um, and into the 2000s, this meant choosing Mina repertoire that was more palatable and familiar to Western audiences, which usually meant music devoid of quarter tones. A small group of bands performing Mina Jewish music, led primarily by artists in their 20s, popped up in different parts of the US in the 2000s. These bands almost always included one band member of Mina background. But these groups took diverse approaches to presenting this music. For example, the band Zatar, a Bay Area band released a self-titled album in 2000 and attempted to stay true to the Mizrahi cassette recordings of Piu Team they picked up in Israel. This is the track Chochma Bina, a pizmon popular among Syrian Jews adapted from a Farid al Atrash song. Bon, my all-female band, which began in Austin, Texas, released its first album in 2002 with more of an eclectic approach to traditional songs. This clip of Yadi Bonalam, an Iraqi piyut, includes banjo, Indian tabla, three-part harmony, and gospel-inspired vocals. Finally, Michal Cohen, a second-generation Yemenite Israeli transplant living in New York City, released an electronic approach to Yemenite Jewish music with her album Henna in 2007. Here's a clip of a piyut from the track Yemenite Medley. So as you can see, there's really no real unity in the musical approaches taken uh, by these bands. But I'd argue that what unites all of these groups is that their band leaders all spent time in Israel and were very influenced by the cultural scene there where Mizrahi music had finally begun to go mainstream after years of marginalization. In the 2010s, musicians continued to mix their Middle Eastern grooves with electronic beats, Western classical music, flamenco, jazz, and more, but the identity politics shifted significantly in the U.S., particularly following the establishment of the Black Lives Matter movement of 2013. These cultural shifts have brought a new consciousness to the American Jewish community in the past few years, regarding the marginalization of MENA Jewish traditions. Simultaneously, many young progressive MENA Jews have begun reclaiming their musical heritages here in the U.S. in recent years. Most prominent are new women and queer-led MENA communities. During the pandemic, some of them created bi-coastal and even transnational egalitarian Sephardi Mizrahi spaces over Zoom for chanting Slichot, Shir Hashirim, Kabbalat Shabbat, and more. And I'm really excited to see the new directions these musical communities will take. Thank you.